Oh, YouTube. Should I call this like redraw with Reb? Reb redraw? Re re Reb, Reb draw? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the video. My name's Reb, if you don't know me. Today, I'm gonna show you my art process for this Hitman Secret Sleepover Society fan art. Haha, <laughs> okay, fun fact. I exported these files from Procreate, and turns out it kept the time lapse from the first drawing. It saved the time lapse from a year ago. So we're gonna look at that too. To hit the bell, don't forget to like and subscribe. P.S. By the way, I have a membership tier on Ko-fi that gets you a shout out at the end of every video. There's a lot of other cool things in there like monthly doodles, wallpapers, sneak peeks, discounts, and more. So if you would like to support a little guy like me in my video making and art making endeavors, please head over there. Lowest tier for a shout out is $3 a month. That's a steal. That's like a snack, or less than a snack. All right, let's get started. What is Hitman? That's a good question. The Hitman series was a video game that Jacob and Julia played in early 2021. The stream for it was a wild ride because Julia had dressed up in a really cool, really cool outfit suit situation to be the Hitman. Um, and Jacob said, I should have dressed fancy. And well... Oh, Hitman. <laughs> he sure did. Oh, Hitman. Is this the right pose for a sexy woman? Yeah. If you'd like to go watch the VOD, you can go find it here. And wow, look, who did that thumbnail art? Hmm, they seem familiar. Lovely Kaz reached out to me and said, hey, can I put this as the thumbnail? And I said, yeah. Thank you, Kaz. Now I'm pretty sure that I had started this drawing at one point and then put it in the rough drafts for like a couple months. You can tell that there's a moment where my art style kind of changes in the initial doodling stages. I also remembered that when I was doing the first piece, I used 3D models. Wow. I used 3D models to try to figure out some of the posing, um, which was fine for me back then because I didn't understand like the perspective. I had a basic understanding of the anatomy and I wasn't too worried about it. Doing this did help me learn at the time. However, be careful if you're doing this because using 3D models and tracing over them can, can make you reliant on it um, and you will be kicking yourself later for not learning the basics. So please learn the fundamentals, use 3D models as reference to help you, but understand what might be at stake. Sometimes using a base like that can limit your decision-making process when it comes to things like posing or composition. Your brain gets stuck in what is real, what is accurate, what is anatomically correct. And sometimes that doesn't matter when you're doing art. Sometimes if it looks okay to normal people, but you're like, oh, that perspective isn't right. Who cares? It looks cool. Better to be finished, not perfect, I think. I don't remember the saying. Yeah, don't 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 worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, one of the main problems that I had when I started this redraw, I redlined the original art, which we can see already had some anatomical errors, even if they were minor or didn't really matter at the time. It did restrict me because my brain got stuck in, this is what the piece needs to be. Kind of like how professional redecorators or interior designers will take all the furniture out so that they can see it in a new light so that you're not attached to any ideas. Like, oh, but this, the couch has to go in this corner because that's where it got. No, I don't care. Move the couch, get it out of here. I wanted to start this with a almost 100% fresh view. Since it's a redraw, I wanted to show how much I've grown and I really wanted to focus on like refining the composition, if that meant changing the pose, if that meant changing the subject matter. I'm sorry, Joy and Olive. If you give yourself a structure, if you give your art a structure, if it's holding you back, just try removing it and see what happens. Take out the bones, remove your bones, give them to me. Here I am redlining the piece as a quick jumping off point to capture the line of, of movement, the line of action, if you will, in the piece. And then I allowed myself to kind of iterate on it. So in terms of posing and anatomy, one of the big things I learned since making the first piece was the concept of the bean and the bowl. Karina from Drawfee did teach the bean and the bowl in one of her draw classes, and it honestly changed, it changed my life. Thank you, Karina. I also learned more recently, like in the past couple of months, that the torso can be divided kind of into two parts. The pectoral muscles, they're not as big as the rib cage. They sit on the upper half in between the collarbone and like, I guess, 
the bottom of the sternum? They're not as big as the rib cage. They're not as long as the rib cage, which makes sense when you say it out loud, but I had a really hard time getting this into my little brain. My neurons were rubbing together and they were like, I don't understand. I just want to draw boobies. And I was like, that's fair. You're allowed to, but just learn anatomy. So thank you, Karina. Once I started to get these poses in, I realized the composition would be a lot cooler if I had one of them facing forward and one of them facing backward. But my brain was telling me, that's unfair. Who's going to be facing backwards? And I said, both of them. That's right, we did two. We made two whole dang pieces. Because I don't know when to quit. Challenge yourself, Reb. Let's go. Iteration. Fantastic. Hooray. At a certain point in this drawing, I realized I was still having a hard time with the posing, so I decided I needed to pull up some references and relearn how to draw a dang torso. I found these references on Pinterest. I will drop links in the description if I can find them. I know that I couldn't find the artist for one of them, so please help me. If you know who did this reference image right here, please let me know in the comments and I will add it to the description. Thank you, credit your artists. Sometimes even though you've been doing art for 15 years or however long you've been doing art, you will still have to relearn the basics from time to time. It's weird, but sometimes you realize, I, I forgot how to draw. That's one of the things I've really been focusing on this year is, is giving myself grace and to accept that I need to relearn the fundamentals. I gotta brush up on my skills. I gotta do some stretching, you know? So when I got around to putting in the back facing characters, um, I realized I could use a neat little trick that I learned from watching people who do character turnarounds for character design. You've heard of flipping the canvas, now flip that pose! Hitman, are you looking at my, my touche? <laughs> Hitman, how dare you? Basically, I flipped them around and used their silhouette to draw the new shape. It's not 100% accurate and there were some angles I needed to change. For example, the bowl or the bean, if you have the bowl tipping forward towards the viewer, and you spin it around 180 degrees, now it's gonna be tipping away from the viewer. So you have to make sure those contour lines of the body are in the correct place. And again, oh my God, use reference. Oh my God, use reference. You can see the number of times I pull up references during this process. This reference was by this person right here, thank you. When I don't think I need reference, 80% of the time I will spend an extra hour trying to get the thing right until I realize Oh, this would have been a lot easier with a reference. And then I pull up a reference in five seconds and suddenly I can do art again. Holy shit. I do want to mention the positives that I found in the past drawing because I think it would be shameful of me to not pat my old self on the back and say, good job, you did good. The original piece had really pretty lighting. The colors were nice. I think the concept was really fun. However, one of the issues with the original piece that I didn't realize until I started this redraw, I didn't know at the time what my iPad resolution was. So I drew this piece on a four by six inch canvas. That's small. That's like, you can put that in the mailbox and put a, put a 60 cent stamp on it and it'll go. At this time, I also didn't know what DPI was or uh, PPI, I guess, haha, <laughs> PP. I'm pretty sure it was set at 300 DPI but on a 4x6 canvas, that still makes it a 4x6 canvas. Like, it doesn't really matter. 300 DPI equals 300 pixels per inch, so it was still 4x6. So when I started this one, I made sure to bump up the size of the canvas. We are growing, our canvas is growing. It represents my art journey, my skill level, d growth as a human. And not only does this give me a cleaner look in the final piece, it also can hide some of the stray sketch lines or pixels that my style tends to be. And I really like seeing the energy in my sketches. I think my sketches are always very vibrant. <laughs> That's a word. They're messy. But that really lets me convey the energy in a piece in a way that my clean line art couldn't do. And you can see in this process, my sketches are, uh, off the wall bananas. Wow. I don't tend to do clean line art anymore and that's just a personal preference. I, I, I can't be contained <laughs> by clean line art. Don't make me, don't make me do it. Because I made two pieces, I jumped back and forth between two different canvases a lot. So some of the recording process is a little silly and messed up, a little bit wonky. But basically as I had made progress on one of the poses, I would copy paste it into the other one flip it around, make sure that they were both on the same track so I wouldn't forget any of the information I had in my wee little brain about how I was like rendering or sketching or what pencil size I was using. And you can see me trying to draw 
a suit without reference. So here I pulled up a suit. I think this is literally an ad to buy a suit. I'm not gonna link them because I'm not sponsored. Oh, hey, Jacob. Ooh, this reminds me. I also had a realization about thumbs earlier this week. Yes, thumbs. I just realized that thumbs are like a little Dorito chip sticking off of your hand and then you draw the two joints. Isn't that cool? I don't know. So here I am redrawing and redrawing and redrawing this over and over again because my sketching process is a lot like sculpting in that I will get the basic shapes, the, the forms, and then I will whittle it down. And sometimes that's tough because I don't want to whittle it down too much. I don't want to lose the cool movement of the piece. Um, and so I've been getting better at that, but sometimes I do still take away too much. So once I've refined the sketches to how I wanted them, um, I started laying in the base color. I wanted it to have kind of this glowing, airbrushy, natural look. I thought it would look nice with my line art style um, and some of the lighting I was gonna try to do. Again, I had to pull up a reference of Julia because I thought I knew how to draw Julia. I do not know how to draw Julia. You gotta relearn things. <laughs> you gotta relearn things, dang it. Once I had painted the skin for the first piece, I flipped over and started painting the skin for the second piece so that it was fresh in my mind. You'll see Julia pop up a couple of times because I wanna make sure that their color palettes are in the same realm um, and that nothing is too saturated. I also started painting the dress and had one hell of a time with it. And then I copy paste, flip it, flip it and reverse it, start rendering the backs of some of them. And of course, because of the way my brain works, I don't notice things until a lot later. Um, so there are a couple times where you'll see me change the line art again or uh, undo stuff. It happens. Flip it again, start rendering the backs again, you know. Then I started laying in the lighting and I had a really fun time with this. I wanted there to kind of be a glow, but not an overwhelming one. And I thought that this green pin light was really nice to say like, maybe there's a secondary light source or you got some bounce light coming up from like, I don't know, some smoke or something. Um, and I didn't want it to look too washed out or too dark. And I think that these layers ended up really nice. So this is just me futzing back and forth, making sure that the values are correct. Gotta put that secret drink. You wouldn't have poisoned my beverage, Hitman, would you? Any poison, Hitman? It was poisoned the whole time I knew. It was poisoned. I knew it, Hitman. <laughs> I knew it to be true. Reb, take notes. Sometimes you have to redo the lighting a bunch of times. Sometimes I don't remember how I did things. And then I added some of the finishing touches, like hard light. And then I got to doing the background and the text, and I realized I didn't want to take away from this piece that I wor worked so hard on. I didn't really like how bold the words were in the original, and so I spent a lot of time figuring out how I wanted the words to be present. I ended up going with a really simple text line towards the top, and I think it gave it this really cool, like, I don't know, bougie, rich people, hitman vibe, like, you know, it just felt really cool. And I think that's it. Here are both pieces. I've already posted them on Twitter, so if you saw them before today, congratulations. Let me know in the comments with a first. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go watch Secret Sleepover Society every Wednesday and Sunday, not 9 p.m. Eastern time? 9 p.m. Eastern time. Do you have any old art you want to redraw? This is me challenging you to do it. Why don't you redraw your old art and share it below or share, I don't know. Please let me know what you liked about this video. You can find me at most, if not all socials at Rebecca Roni. Don't forget to check out my Kofi. If you want your name, shout it out at the end of the next video. Thank you to Nico Nico Tan, Rob Adair, Silly Wizard 97 and Mira Valier for all your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, goodbye! Oh, hit man!